Hey guys, it's Kim Bowen with The Marriage Place. And I'm John Bowen, her <laughs> husband. <laughs> and so I actually talked him into joining us again and maybe even another time. So um, thanks for doing that. Well, you're welcome. So um, we've gotten some feedback on the other stuff that we've put out there. And one of the things that we're hearing, John, is that everybody is excited that they're getting a chance to see a real marriage. Well, it's real. <laughs> <laughs> it is real. It is real. And so I think that's kind of cool too, because, you know, we live in this world of Instagram and Facebook where. And I am a perfect robot Stepford wife. Yeah. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. This is, oh dear. Um, this is going to get exciting. I can see that. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So, you know, we, we live in a world where it's so easy to compare, but we're not comparing to even anything realistic. You shouldn't compare anyway, but especially to Facebook and Instagram pictures of these happy families traveling to Europe and beautiful kids and unicorn dresses going to parties. And anyway, so I can get lost down the whole rabbit trail there. Come and get me if I do. Okay. Don't let me go. I'll throw you a roll. <laughs> okay. All right, so we thought it would be helpful um, to kind of explain to you the dynamic. John, I've been married 28 years, and for at least 20 of them, <laughs> we, we fought a lot around a particular dynamic that we didn't even understand. We didn't know why we were fighting. Um, we just knew that um, things weren't changing, and we were arguing about the same things over and over, and that was frustrating. Um, mostly that I was right and that you were wrong. That's debatable. <laughs> you can go ahead and tell them now. But... She wasn't the one. Right. <laughs> and so, because that, um, we were stuck. We were stuck a lot. And it was really easy to believe that we were in the wrong marriage, um, that it was hopeless, that um, he couldn't change. He couldn't be the man I wanted him to be. Um, I couldn't be happy. Um, I wasn't the woman for him, although that probably never crossed your mind. No, it really didn't. Yeah, you're the chooser. We kind of already went through that. Jesus, you know. Anyway, so here's the thing. So because of the way you're raised, and this we're not blaming your parents for your marriage, but because of the, the house you grew up in, that created a pattern in you of how you express when you're upset and when you're uh, needing something or, or, or wanting something and uh, how you give and receive love. And so based on our attachment styles or the house that we grew up in, um, John turns out to be a conflict avoider and a pleaser. And I came out of my um, family dynamic, family of that. origin as not that. <laughs> and so the, yeah, I wondered how to raging witch. Um, no, that's not. I wouldn't say that was it. You wouldn't say that was it. I wouldn't. That's nice of you. <laughs> I actually um, consider myself an angry uh, pursuer. Yeah. And so what we knew that we had the same types of arguments all the time, but we didn't understand this dynamic. And I kept wanting and needing and asking him to change, and he would promise me he would. And he wouldn't. And I would feel bad about my behavior and I would want to change and I wouldn't. And so it was a terrible feeling. And so here's, here's why I think this is relevant for you guys is that I get a lot of couples in my office every week. And there is one partner who is more um, intimidating in some way. They often, they may not think they're intimidating. I didn't think I was intimidating. Um, but they're, they don't mind to ask for what they want. They're vocal. Um, they'll tell you what's on their mind. Sometimes they have a filter. Sometimes they may not, but the other partner, it feels like they're walking on eggshells. Um, and it's not because, you know, I was going to throw acid in your face or, you know, clobber you with a frying pan. No, but a lot of it had to do with me. I didn't, you know, I viewed myself as the nice guy that everybody likes. I didn't want to be not liked. And so therefore, just simply because she might get mad at me, then, you know, I, I didn't want that to happen. That's right. So 
what ends up happening is we'd have these arguments and then you would look like Jesus. And I, yeah, I know I'm going to quit saying that, but I would look like this crazy person because the more you didn't show up or keep a promise, the louder and madder I got. Remember that? Nope. Yeah. So, and that, and you know, the angry pursuer can be a woman or a man. Um, uh, it can be either or. And so that dynamic is important to understand it because if, if you don't get the right help with it, you're going to be stuck a lot, a long time. Did I just not elbow you over? I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> no, please don't go. <laughs> don't leave me now <laughs> after all we've been through. All right. And so, um, and because I was the angry pursuer, of course, I, I needed you to change. And I pretty much had you convinced you had to change. And you did. Honestly, you did have to change. I, I did. I mean. I, but I had to change too. Yeah, I mean, it, it, was, a, it was a two way street. And a lot of times um, in arguments or in discussions, um, I would feel like I had no point <laughs> mm -hmm. when I really did. And that became a very difficult thing for me was to try to communicate my point and for her, I mean, she didn't want to hear the point. <laughs> um, I don't know about that. Well, but I mean, you did because you'd come back later. A lot of times you came back later and said, okay, you had a, you had a point and I see that now. Um, well, you got to remember pleasers, conflict avoiders, you're over-promising, under-delivering. That is so frustrating. Yeah. Um, and you are telling everybody what they want to hear. And you're not really even, you don't even take the time to know what it is you do want, you know? So I can be planning things and you're like, sure, okay, 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 whatever. Yeah. And then that creates a dynamic in me, like I'm the only one who cares enough to make things happen. It's all on me, all the decisions are mine because he just doesn't ever show up. Right. Or you're just always going to be okay with it. Yeah. And so, you know, um, so it was really important for you to learn what it is you do want, not what do I want and you need to please me. And then it was, you had to learn how to hold that line in the sand and ask for it and, and negotiate with me to get what you wanted. I mean, sometimes a good partnership is where two people can wrestle the caught sitting in the tension, but you can actually wrestle your point of view. You get in trouble when two people come to the table and they want something and one caves too quickly or overcompensates by going over too aggressively to get what they want, right? You need two partners who are willing. So not only you, your part in this was you had to be willing to hold firm in that place. I had to be willing to say, yes, this is really what I want and not worry about, not worry so much about what you want. Yeah. Or what I thought about or it. Or what you thought about it. And do it in a respectful way. Yeah. And then I had to hold ground and be able to hear it. And, and sometimes hear, no, you're not going to get that because even though you really, really want it. And then we negotiate. Yeah. I have a great idea. You may not like it. Okay. Because again, we're unscripted. There is something that we have been disagreeing on for a really long time. You know, it's coming, don't you? <laughs> There's something we've been disagreeing on for a really long time. And How much time do we have left? We don't have the note very much. I want a golden doodle. And I don't want another dog. We and you don't want dogs. another dog. Who needs three dogs? Who needs three dogs? I want a golden doodle so bad. And so, um, in the past, when we were first married, how would this have played out? Um, I would have either caved in. And said, here, go get here, it. Here, go get it. Except on. you wouldn't have been nice about it. You would have been like, go, go ahead. You're going to get one anyway. Just do it. Yeah. Or. I would have stood my ground and then you would have come up with some way to get it. <laughs> <laughs> that I couldn't say no to. <laughs> Like it's my birthday and I'm dying of cancer. Yeah, something like something that. like that. Yeah, or I would have said, "Screw you, I'm getting the dog." Yeah, right. And so now we're trying to negotiate to see how this is going to land. That's what we're trying to do. <laughs> so 
So can I have a golden doodle? Not yet, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That didn't go as well as I thought it was, but we'll, we'll, we'll look at <laughs> What you want me to say? Oh, yes, honey, you can have one right now. Yes. No, that's not happening. Yes, I do. See, that's, yeah. See, I'm growing. You're growing, I know. Can you start next week? No. <laughs> All right, so, so if, if one of you, if you're in a marriage where the dynamic is one of you is, uh, gets their way all the time because um, one partner is, you know, they collapse or, or they just get mad and, and you've got a partner who gets mad when everything doesn't go their way. So that can look like pouting and it can look like punishment. It can look like um, withdrawing you know, you're not going to love me, whatever. I'm not going to give you what you want either. And so we get in these little dumb little games that we do to each other and play with each other. So I think that's something you want to avoid. But um, there is hope for all of that. You just have to figure out, you have to know what that dynamic is. And then you got to find somebody who can help you work through it. Um, not all therapists are um, trained to work with these kinds of dynamics in a way that's really helpful. So find somebody that knows what they're doing. Um, yeah, some, find somebody, for me, it took somebody who was willing to confront me and look at me and say, so what are you getting out of that? And why are you doing that? Is that really what you want? Doing Do you, what? Why are you doing what? What's that? Why, whatever it was, what, whether it was, you know. Why are you over-promising? Why am I over-promising and not delivering? Um, and the, the, the thing that got me the most was when I started seeing some of that behavior in my own kids. When you can identify Ooh. that just, then you're like, oh my goodness, look at this. Yeah. So we're, we're raising a kid who can be a pleaser. So yeah, that's tough. It's tough to see it. Um, so yeah. So uh, no matter how hard you think your marriage is. It can get better. You it can. can it can really work. I mean, I don't feel like I'm walking on eggshells in, all the time. All the time, or at all ever. There are some times that I do. Yeah. But now I don't stay walking on eggshells. What do you do when you feel like you're walking on eggshells now? Now I come to you and I say I feel like I'm walking on eggshells, or the equivalent thereof about whatever the subject is. Say, you know, this happened, and I don't like the way this happened. Or I don't like the way this feels. Yeah. Yeah, we had an incident just to get the other day that we worked through one of those so beautifully, so different than we would have, you know, six years ago, or four years ago. Or, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, we hope this helps you guys. Um, fight for it. Figure it out. Don't settle for less. It's worth it. It's worth it. Because when you can work through these dynamics, it feels like freedom, doesn't it? It does. You feel good about yourself. You feel good about what you're doing. And you feel good about your marriage and mm -hmm. you realize why you married the person in the first place. All right. Time's up. All right. <laughs> Bye guys. Bye.